A quick recap of our previous recaps. Akari and Michelle are ambushed by two special terraformars. Michelle has to fight the one with her father's powers, while Akari has to fight an acidic one. But finally, he has a proper weapon upgrade, and now he can fight the terraformar to his full potential. Seeing his new blade, the terraformar dressed like God steps back. Akari recounts how he was abandoned when he was just a baby and left in front of a dojo. The terraformar is going to die of boredom if Akari does not do anything soon. So, to take the plot forward, the god terraformar starts using his own club to throw powerful streams of rocks at him. Meanwhile, Sylvester tells Komachi of his theory about an ancient civilization called Rahab. He believes that Rahab created the terraformars and maybe even humanity. However, there is no proof that Rahab exists or ever existed. The theory was proposed by a Russian member of the Bugs 2 mission, and the Russian president also believes in this theory. That's enough exposition. Back to the action sequence. Akari is pushed back by the terraformar, but he goes full samurai on it and kills it with a single stroke. But he is far too tired, so he also collapses to the ground. Meanwhile, Michelle is fighting the ant terraformar. She also has a flashback, because a backstory during a fight scene is a necessity in every anime. Once, when she was young, her school collapsed. Her friends had suffered terrible injuries, but she alone came out unharmed. Michelle hated her father for disappearing, but when she looks into the files that Komachi gave her, she realized that her father was a hero. Her powers are a memory of her father. Using her father's memories as motivation, Michelle kicks the ant terraformar's ass. She uses a unique rocket system on her armor to break its limbs, but in the process, her bones also start getting cracked. Still, Michelle steps forward and keeps attacking the terraformar. But she gets too tired and the terraformar is still alive. It is just about to kill her, but Akari arrives just in time. He throws his blade at the terraformar and binds it using his threads. They can now finally rest. But no, the Chinese arrive to take them. Before coming to them, the Chinese man named Bao shoots Alex's leg. Then, Bao uses his net to capture the two of them, and he starts taking them back to the Annex ship. Meanwhile, Akari's teammates are digging underground towards the Annex ship. Their plan is to destroy the signal jamming tower and tell everyone on Earth that the Chinese have betrayed them. While the rest are digging, Marcos takes a little break to think about that sad, sad moment when Sheila was killed and how Alex forgave him. While Bao is driving their ship towards his base, a giant net stops them. So, Bao puts it on autopilot and goes out to protect the ship from a horde of terraformars coming their way. All he has is that one blade, and he fights without using any mutant powers. Since there are thousands of terraformars, Bao throws Alex and Yaeko away as a distraction. Alex saves Yaeko, and he takes this very, very dangerous time to do something important. To tell Yaeko that he has a crush on her. Seriously, not the right time, buddy. Alex tells her to run away but Yaeko obviously does not do that. She uses the drug and reveals her own mutation, the Striped Skunk. Her smell is so strong that even the terraformars are afraid of stepping forward. Suddenly, Yaeko is shot by a mutant terraformar with the power to shoot highly compressed water. Yaeko falls down in pain. The terraformar also shoots Bao's arm. Now that Yaeko is injured, the terraformars step forward and kick Alex until he bleeds. Then, they come to finish the job on Yaeko. However, the terraformer drops dead. Coming to their rescue is the number one ranked warrior, Joseph, the leader of the Roman division. Michelle is just angry at Joseph for not being available all this while. Come on, Joseph was just saving himself for the third act. I mean, if he just walks in when there is no danger, then where is the fun in that? Joseph takes his own sword and then, without using any mutation powers, he takes on all the terraformars at once. That's pretty badass, not gonna lie. They catch up to Bao's ship quickly while he slices the terraformars on the way. He gets on top of the ship, coming face to face with Bao. Joseph and Bao go all out against each other while also fighting the terraformars, which are attacking them at the same time. Bao tries to kick Michelle. Seeing this, Joseph gets furious because, well, he's a hard simp for her. He breaks Bao's leg and then throws him overboard. Bao is immediately killed by a horde of terraformars. Joseph tells Michelle about his division. He attracted the attention of the terraformars while sending his crew members away. But the water bullet power belonged to one of his members. 
meaning that his crew members are all probably dead. Joseph drives the ship while Yaeko gives the drug to Michelle and Akari. After Michelle recovers, Joseph makes a marriage proposal to her. Michelle splutters out all her water in shock. Michelle reveals that Joseph has proposed to her before as well, just four days after they met. Michelle wants to tell him to kindly frock off, but she can't do that since Joseph literally just saved her and her teammates' lives. So she agrees to have lunch with him once they get back on Earth. Meanwhile, the members of the Japanese and American divisions are about to reach the Annex ship, but they are found by the Chinese. It turns out to be Bao. He's still alive somehow. Guess even villains are wearing plot armors here. Bao promptly shoots the members, so Keiji and Marcos take their drugs and quickly engage him in battle. Marcos makes quick work and defeats him, but there is another Bao who is holding a girl, Peggy, hostage. Peggy cuts him with her spikes, and they quickly start running towards the tower while Marcos engages Bao. Luckily for them, the other members of the Chinese division have gone out to capture Akati and Michelle. However, the Japanese and Americans do not know that Hong is using her bacteria. Just then, the dragonfly captures Peggy and throws her into the horde of terraformars. Marcos comes face to face with Bao, or rather, a multitude of them. Bao reveals that he has the power of a sea squirt which can clone itself. Meanwhile, the rest of them enter the Annex ship. There, they find out that there is a biological weapon active right now, and they have 15 minutes left to live. Just then, the dragonfly comes in front of them. Keiji holds it back with his boxing skills. The dragonfly is too fast, and Keiji loses one arm. But he also manages to send a finishing blow and beat the dragonfly. However, he gets separated from the rest of the team. Outside, Bao reveals to Marcos that a Chinese battleship is coming to Mars. Once it reaches here, they will kill everyone who is not allied to the Chinese. So he asks Marcos to join his side. So Marcos lays down his weapon and relaxes on the ground. When Bao starts talking cheerfully like a homicidal sociopath, Marcos drives his staff right through his smug face. When Bao shoots at him, Marcos stops all the bullets and kills them. Down on Earth, the German Chancellor asks the Roman president to join the alliance with Japan and America, but the Romans decline. He has the warrior Joseph and he does not need an alliance with America and Japan. Instead, he asks Germany to join him. Ichiro and his brother Hiruma find out that the Chinese battleship is about to reach Mars. Inside the annex, another one of Bao's clones commands Hong to release all her bacteria and kill Keiji and the others that have entered. The dragonfly terraformer also wakes up. Keiji goes to the control room while his teammates go to look for the protective armor. Hong tells Bao that she can't kill any more humans. But Bao slaps her and brings her to her senses, reminding her why she's here, for her family back on Earth. If they are caught by the other countries of Earth, then they will be treated as traitors to humanity. Keiji's teammates, Amelia, Wolf, and a few others, are looking for the protective gear. However, some terraformars have also entered the ship. They have found many clones of Bao, which they killed. I can't believe I'm saying this, but good job, terraformars! Then they wear protective gear and destroy the remaining suits right in front of them. But instead of attacking them, they immediately go for Bao and Hong. So Bao holds them back. Despite being 2v1, Bao is just about to kill them, but one of the terraformar turns out to be a mutant. It stabs him with poison. It is about to penetrate him again, but Hong stops it. Meanwhile, Liu and three Bao clones are looking for Michelle and Akari. Michelle and the group are actually going north as commanded by Captain Komachi. The terraformars are about to kill Hong and Bao, but Keiji stops one of them while Chun-Li stops the other one. But Keiji is not impressed by Chun-Li's nudity and he throws her a suit for him to wear. Immediately after, she punches the living guts out of him. But Keiji is one of the best fighters here, and he gets back up. However, he says that he has a policy of never hitting any women. So when Chun-Li beats him up, he does not hit back. He gets hurt terribly, but Keiji keeps coming back. Meanwhile, the rest of his team members reach the control room with six minutes left for the bacteria to start working on them. Meanwhile, Joseph goes to find Liu. Joseph knows that Liu will start firing long-range missiles at Michelle and Akari if he has no other choice. So he goes to stop him before that happens. Meanwhile, Keiji continues halting Chun-Li while Wolf hacks the tower from inside the control room. Things are pretty intense as he has to get it done in six minutes, just like the deadline night for my final year report. 
Wolf thinks about the time he was fired for not completing his report properly, but his teammates send him validations and encourage him to work without worrying. So he gets to work. Suddenly, a terraformer enters the room through a hole in the floor, but none of them can dare to move or say anything. None of them is a fighter after all, and they are rushing to finish the job. The terraformer starts attacking them, so Keiji enters and kills the terraformer. Chun-Li tries to stop their hacking, so Keiji holds her down. Suddenly, the terraformer tries to kill Hong, so Keiji saves her. Letting her die would save them all a lot of trouble, but he saves her anyway. Seriously, my boy Keiji is everywhere. Then, Keiji breaks the floor to save his friends. They all survive the fall using one of the members' webs, but the terraformer is still alive. Both Chun-Li and Keiji attack, but it seems to have no effect. The terraformer has the powers of a Rattel, which is extremely aggressive and also has a thick fur that can absorb attacks. Keiji and Chun-Li work together to fight the Rattel terraformer, but the Rattel terraformer is too strong for them. So Keiji punches with full power while Chun-Li guides it with her precision. They kill the Rattel, but the force knocks them both out as well. Wolf regrets not being able to hack the tower, and now the bacteria will start taking effect. However, one of their members, Amelia, is still up there. She goes to finish the job that Wolf started without any concern for her safety. Down on Earth, the German Chancellor asks Ichiro to work with her, but Ichiro has faith in his people on Mars. While Amelia is doing her best to hack into the system, Akari and Michelle are fending off a lot of terraformers again. Amelia has the narwhal whale mutation. When it dives deep, it can turn off any organs it does not need and only uses the ones it needs. So she shuts off her other organs while only focusing on working her fingers to hack the tower. While working on the system, she thinks about how much she loves Keiji and how she's afraid of dying. With tears and blood, she continues typing away. Finally, she just needs to press one button. She vomits blood and almost faints, but she presses the button anyways. Everyone all around realizes what happened. Michelle, Akari, everyone! Liu panics. Suddenly, some terraformers come at the door, ready to kill her. But Amelia takes the speaker and contacts Earth. The backup jamming starts taking effect. But just before the connection shuts off completely, she manages to relay one message. Save us. All the world leaders quickly work towards sending a rescue ship to Mars. Meanwhile, Amelia is about to be killed, but some other members of her team save her. An army of terraformers rush in, so they have little time to waste. Down on Earth, Yu NASA finds out that there are three ships going toward Mars. One is that Chinese battleship, and there are two others as well. Who are they? Unknown. We'll get to know them later. Later, Amelia wakes up with the rest of her teammates. Apparently, Hong has an antidote to her own bacteria, so they are all safe. I mean, that was quite convenient. The Annex ship is overrun by the terraformers. Amelia apologizes to Captain Komachi for not being able to relay the full message about the Chinese betrayal, but Komachi comforts her. He reveals that when the jamming system was down, Michelle and Akari contacted the German government and told them everything about the Chinese. He thanks her and her teammates for sacrificing so much to get those precious 10 seconds. Despite losing so many people, Komachi says that their mission has been successful. Now they have to wait for their rescue ships. Liu is a villain, and like all villains who have lost, he too cannot take it properly. He is very bitter about the whole thing, so he prepares to fire a guided missile at Akari and Michelle. But, surprise surprise, let's not forget one thing. Rank 1, Joseph. He's been looking for Liu, and he finally reaches them, ready to end it. Akari and Michelle, along with Yaeko and Alex, continue their journey north as commanded by Captain Komachi. Captain Komachi also brings his entire combined division to the north. He says that they'll be going to the sea. Looks like we're going to have a lot of sea battles in Season 3, folks! Down on Earth, a couple is having a nice time on their date. Suddenly, they are ambushed by… terraformers? What? How did they get here? They kill the couple with ease. Elsewhere, two other terraformers can be seen living a normal life in an apartment. Elsewhere, on Mars, one of the mutant terraformers obtains the electricity power that Adolf used to have, while a group of politician terraformers look over him. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching!